If you want to gain trust in a method, it's always good if the clinical findings and the additional findings you see with other modalities fit to the technique. And this is such an example. A patient who comes in with an inferior infarct, I guess it's quite clear that there are wall motion abnormalities in the typical inferior leads. And we have an angiogram of the patient where the right coronary artery looks really ugly. We have an occluded right coronary artery and diffuse abnormalities here. And if we look at the echocardiogram, here is the two-chamber view, it's quite apparent that there's a wall motion abnormality reaching from the inferior septum here to the inferior wall. The same can be seen here in the four-chamber view. Remember, the basal part of the inferior septum belongs to the right coronary artery, so expect to see wall motion abnormalities here, and indeed we do. Here is the two-chamber view with the inferior wall. You see that there is a wall motion abnormalities in the basal and mid part of the inferior wall. And we also see that there is hyperkinesia or a problem in the posterior lateral wall as well. Here is the strain. I guess it's beautiful to see that the regions that are involved correlate very nicely with what we actually see with the naked eye. We have the inferior segments involved, the inferior septum involved, and also the posterior lateral wall involved. And the example I'm showing you here is just one of many examples I've seen where this correlation between what we see with the eye correlates so nicely with the speckle tracking. Maybe, and that will be demonstrated in some other cases, there is even additional information when looking at the bullseye display because at least in my opinion, I believe we see even more with speckle tracking than we see with the naked eye.